When I do a video about power banks, I can almost guarantee now that one of the questions I'll get is, can it be charged and discharged at the same time? Can it effectively be a 5 volt uninterruptible power supply, a UPS? And I can think of a couple of places where that might be handy. For example, you might have a solar project and you want to power the power bank from a USB solar panel. And then in the evening, you still want your uh, device to continue to work. So uh, you want it to work while it's being charged and while it's not being charged. Or perhaps you might live in a region where the grid power is a little bit unreliable. And on one of those YouTube videos, a user going by the name of Rector Magnificus suggested I have a look at this little item. Now here's the unit on eBay. It's a 2-in-1, 4.2 volt charger and 5 volt discharger board, DC to DC step-up converter module, uh, UPS. Uh, so this is sold as a 5 volt UPS. And we can see on this image here, this is effectively in the UPS mode, an input of uh, 4.5 to 8 volts. So a 5 volt input will be absolutely fine. A lithium battery here in the middle and an output of 5 volts. And I bought this particular module at $3.00. 86 cents and I'll put a link down in the description below and looking at the module here and the ICs we can straight away see the TP4056 uh, on board there and uh, just to the right of that this uh, little six pin device here AL631 and that seems to be the boost circuitry a uh, shocky diode there an inductor and uh, yeah, so this is just simply a TP4056 module with a step-up converter attached to it. Not dissimilar, it must be said, to the uh, TP4056 boost converter I put inside this uh, thermometer a few weeks ago, which is still working absolutely fine. Now this AL631 seems to be this Linear Technologies LTC 3426 step up DC to DC converter and uh, it has an N channel MOSFET within it which explains why there's no other um, MOSFETs on this board but unfortunately it can work to a voltage as low as 1.6 volts and now that's far too low for a lithium cell and there doesn't seem to be any other protection IC on here whatsoever. And in fact, the only other IC, of course, is the TP4056, which doesn't concern itself with a discharge or over-discharge of a lithium cell. So I've got all the bits here in front of me uh, to make this up. We've got an old uh, USB cable here with a broken um, micro USB connector, so I don't mind chopping that up. Uh, 18650 reclaimed from a laptop battery that's got 2100 milliamp hours within it when I tested it. One of these 18650 battery holders, and this is the sort of one that doesn't like to let go of the 18650, so I don't mind putting it in uh, this more permanent solution. Uh, a few bits of heat shrink to make everything safe. A bit of strip board to attach to a uh, USB socket here to make the wiring a bit easier. And of course the actual UPS module itself. So without further ado I'll start putting all this together. Now on the back of this module you can see that actually these are available in various different voltages, 5, 6, 9 and 12. But uh, the most important thing now we need to look at is the pin assignments and we've got uh, V in, ground, battery, ground, then ground, then voltage out. So uh, I need to make sure I get all those the right way round. Now I do intend to stick this here onto the battery holder. So I, hopefully I can make these wires fairly short. Um, I am going to solder them straight onto the pins and uh, put a bit of heat shrink on them to make them safe. So I'll get on with that. So I've tinned the uh, cables here on the battery holder and remembered to put some heat shrink on before I get any further. Now I just need to tin these pins uh, on the uh, module and in fact I may just do all six at the same time. Save coming back to that later. And there we have 
the battery ground connection made and hopefully I can make this connection without burning myself yes so with that heat shrink shrunk um, I think we'll move on to the output next so I've put this piece of strip board here on the back of this uh, USB connector which I'm hoping will make uh, the wiring a bit easier so uh, we only really need the positive and the negative but I will do all four just for a better mechanical connection and I may just reuse the wires from the battery box for this USB connection so I'll just tin those now I'm pretty sure I've got these wires the right way around let's hope I have and that's the USB connector the output connector there uh, ready to connect now to the UPS module uh, just must remember to pop some heat shrink on these wires before I connect it up so there's my USB output connected here to the module and the battery box now I have already prepared and printed a uh, 3d printed uh, box here so hopefully the uh, battery case will fit in there the USB um, output connector will squeeze in there perhaps that's a little bit tight the module sits in there as well and then we just need the input which is coming from this USB cable straight in to uh, the module rather than through any sort of connector uh, well yeah I think that will just just fit in so I just need to cut this wire short and I think because I've put a USB connector on the end here so I can put a USB wire in there I think I'm only going to keep this quite short just a few inches six inches 15 centimeters something like that so we'll go with that and uh, I'll wire that up now so I remembered to put the cable through the case hole and put the heat shrink on there on these cables let's just hope I've remembered correctly that this pin is negative flow those two together and uh, this pin here is positive pretty sure that's correct and with a bit more double-sided tape on the bottom of the uh, battery box if I pull that cable through a little bit the whole thing should should just squeeze in there and it is a bit of a squeeze but I think nothing's touching there that's all good um yeah that's quite neat all I need is the battery in there and a lid and uh, I've got a lid I've 3d printed a lid for the box as well so that one will go on there just as soon as I uh, put this battery this cell I should say of course into the holder um, yeah so now I've got my lid and uh, that clips on there quite firmly so we can see 5 volt UPS and uh, theory has it that should be working right now it's time for the moment of truth let's plug it into this power bank um, nothing seems to be happening the power bank's not on there we go the power bank is now on can't really see for my lid but uh, yes there is a small green LED there and uh, so I'm assuming that's saying it's got power this uh, 18650 should actually be quite full but if we plug in a USB lamp there yes we've got 5 volts on the output and of course we can unplug the power bank and the output stays live so well it's doing exactly as it should let's plug it back in again make sure that's turned on yes it is and uh, unplug and there's absolutely no noticeable change in that lamp whatsoever so uh, that's excellent it seems to be working perfectly now I do want to check the actual output voltage so let's plug in this power monitor and there we go we've got 5.23 volts there showing up on the little port power meter and that's with the uh, power bank running and if I disconnect that 
then we've got the same 5.23 volts so uh, yeah that seems to work very well of course it's also worth checking the output and I have managed to get the uh, one amp output that is claimed by this little module and uh, the 5 volts is holding up nicely so there we have the 5 volt USB uninterruptible power supply module from eBay based around the uh, TP4056 we know it should do a good job of charging this cell so it's a shame there isn't any over discharge protection on this module but as long as you know that you can probably work around that problem this is a good solution if your power goes out for an hour here or there every so often it's also been a fun little project to build, so hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you have, give me a thumbs up, subscribe down below, comment if you can, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.